Hey guys, it's Eric. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, so, welcome to your weekly uh, discussion, our weekly discussion, for Twin Flames and Separation. Um, if you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you are returning to the channel, thank you so much for joining me yet again. Um, I do apologize for getting this these videos out um, a day late. I do usually like to do them on Sundays. Today is Monday. Um, Sunday and Monday are my Saturday and Sunday, you know, for like, you, you get it. So um, yesterday I did a private reading and then I was, I, um, I was gearing up to do the Twin Flame videos and I just, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't feeling it. Um, what I really wanted to do was just go out and spend my day and enjoy myself because it's been a gorgeous, gorgeous weekend. So I did that and I enjoyed myself. It was nice. Um, but, um, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, there really isn't anything specific for me to talk about. Um, in relating to my journey, um, there haven't really been any developments, um, at least on the surface. I know there are things happening underneath the surface. I do know that the energies recently, I'm uh, speaking for myself, recently the energies were have been very intense, but not intense in like the way that they have been. Like I have been going through some periods where, you know, I'll feel like I'm in a dark night of the soul situation. I have been under the un impression that I've, you know, on some level, I've been going through some sort of identity crisis. Now that has that has really um, uh, manifested in the sense of not really being sure of my intuitive abilities. Now, this is the first time you know, you know that I've really been doing these kinds of things you know, professionally, even you know, and uh, you know, supporting myself off of it. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do, but I never felt confident in it until this year. I literally, like, I started this channel January eighth. I did my first uh, private or my first official reading for someone outside of just like me and like my ex-husband um because I was studying while I was with my ex-husband I was studying the cards and then I we I left him you know I moved out blah 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 and on New Year's Eve I started doing readings for people face to face and it just took off from there so I'm still in the very beginning stages of being a professional and a an, uh, card reader and an intuitive card reader um, and so now after, cause if you guys remember, it was around April 1st when like my situation with my twin blew up in my face. So, um, you know, ever since then, I've been going through a period of really questioning, questioning myself, questioning my sanity, questioning my connection to myself and source, con uh, questioning my intuitive abilities and, and all that stuff. And the universe has been systematically proving it to me that I am still connected. I, I uh, you know, I am not acting from a place of ego. I am acting from a, pl a, a place of fifth dimensional awareness, fifth dimensional consciousness. Now I do find myself slipping down into like the fourth and the third dimension. But what I'm really trying to decipher is, am I slipping down there or is my connection with my twin pulling me down there? Because from what I can tell from his energy, he's going through it. And um, a lot of the, most of the divine masculines really are going through it right now. Whether you're in separate, now this video is for twins and separation, but if like say you're watching and you're in union, um, or even in just in, in communication with each other, you know, you guys are communicating and working things out, your divine masculine may be going through it too. Uh, some the person that I did the private reading for yesterday, she got back with me and she mentioned now she is in contact with her twin and she mentioned to me that her divine masculine said to her that he's going through hell. And as soon as I heard that, I immediately thought of my twin. I don't speak to him. We are not in we are not in communication. Um, I did have a dream about him this morning and we ended up in the same place and I said hello to him and I was sitting at a, it was like a, a restaurant situation. Um, we were with a bunch of friends or maybe even business associates, but I was sitting at a table and he showed up and he sat down in the, in the chair right across from me. I said hello to him and he got this really surprised and fake smile on his face and he said hi. And then I heard 
I don't know if he physically said it or if he said it in his head, like telepathically he said it, but he said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? <laughs> you know, um, would, would have been my response, but I just left the table and went to do something else. The, the energies between us are so strange. And from the most part, I know it's not necessarily me that's going through this crisis. Um, other than, you know, questioning my connection with um, the divine and, and my intuitive abilities that are growing, I know I'm not really going through a dark night of the soul. I'm good. I'm really, really good. And so the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys is because I feel like there are others of you that are going through this as well. One moment you're good, you're happy, you're smiling, you feel great, and then all of a sudden you're just pulled like down, down deep. Like it can even go really deep sometimes. Like, I mean, I suffered from depression as a kid. I was diagnosed bipolar. We can talk about that in another video. That's a whole other topic. But I, there are moments recently, and now I've recently gotten all of that under control. You know, I, I suffered from depression as a very, from a very young age um, and mood swings and all that. But I've recently gotten that all that under control and I'm not on any sort of medication for it. I do everything naturally, diet, exercise, meditation, you know, uh, cleaning up old wounds that, you know, will keep you in these cycles of depression and all that shit. I've gotten a handle on that. So now there have been moments within like the past few weeks where I've experienced that really deep depression. It's like, where is this coming from? I mean, I guess as with a bipolar diagnosis, it makes sense that, you know, one minute you'd feel good and the next minute you wouldn't, but there really is no reason for me to feel this way right now. Okay, so where is it coming from? Well, think about what's going on in the collective. Think about what a lot of the divine masculines are going through. Think about the fact that as twin flames, we feel each other, we're connected to each other, and um, we feel each other's emotions. We mirror each other. So if you're going through a period where you really, you really cannot decipher why you should feel, why you're feeling this way right now, well, it's possibly your twin. If that's the case, um, what I've been doing is, um, you know, when I feel these emotions, I dig into it, I look into it, I'm like, okay, well, wait, is there something that I'm healing? Is there something that I'm purging? No, not really. I can't really tell where this is coming from. Okay, fine. Mirror it back. Um, feel the emotions. And in, and what I've been doing was intentionally like feeling the emotions and then putting a mirror around myself to mirror that back out to me to even also def to, 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 to deflect it in a sense, but to not accept the emotions as my own, to put a distinction between me and him and saying, look, you're going through this. Don't <laughs> a friend of mine even mentioned that. And, you know, she said that whenever she feels this way, she she did mention to her twin to, you know, stop stop shoving your emotions down the hole because it's just, it's just all getting all dumped on top of me. And when she did that, you know, he figured it out, lifted it, and everything changed. So I'm not in a position to reach out and be like, stop dumping all your emotions on me. So, <laughs> so I've been mentally mirroring them back, saying, no, nope, this is not mine. This is not mine. You got to handle this, bro. I'm not doing it for you. I cannot do it for you. I am not your trash can. I'm not your dumpster. Okay. I did tell him I can feel him. He knows I can feel him. He knows I can hear him, but I can't really talk to him about it now. So fine. When I feel these things, I mirror it back. Now I don't do that without first trying to decipher if it's actually coming from me or not. Like, is there something that I'm experiencing that I'm going through, um, that I'm purging that is causing me to feel this way. If that is the, the, the situation you find yourself in, the conclusion you come to, then do the work to purge and heal. But if you, after investigating the energies, you find that it's really not yours, just mirror it back. If you're in a sort a state where you can uh, physically communicate about it, go ahead. But if not, just place a mirror bubble around yourself, say, nope, this is not mine, and mirror it back to them because they need to face it, okay? And I'm, I've gotten to such a point of detachment where, um, <clears throat> I really don't even care. And it's not like I don't care, but I'm just, and I guess the word nonchalant just came up, but it's really not even in a disrespectful or a derogatory way. It's just like, look, I'm good within myself. I know who I am. I know what I stand for. I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> you know, I have people around me that even though they're not on the twin flame journey, they still see me for who I truly am and they respect me for that. Um, 
so I'm, I'm starting to see how the love I've been projecting out into the world is in fact coming back to me. So that is helping me stay grounded and centered. Um, but you know, I, I've reached a point where it's like, I can't, I can't worry about how everyone views me. I know that I'm standing in a place of authenticity. I know that I am not taking steps to harass people, to impose upon people. Um, I'm doing the things that I'm being guided to do that are in line with my mission here in life as an individual, not just with my twin, but as an individual. So coming from that place, standing in that space, I feel good about myself and who I am and what I'm doing. So that is another indication that, you know, these moments where I find myself falling down into deeper or to lower emotions um, and thought patterns, I, it's easier for me to recognize that this is not necessarily all my doing. Now I do have to transmute it. I do have to do the work to pull myself back up, but it's not always my deal, which is helpful. So if you find yourself in that position, I would advise you to do as much as you can to investigate these feelings and really decipher where your energy starts and where your twin's energy starts, okay? Now, there is isn't there is not going to be a definitive line. There are no definitive lines between energies. They all flow, but you will be able to feel what is yours, what is of you and what is of your twin, even though you're, you know, you're two parts of the same whole. The other thing I wanna talk about, um, in, in falling deeper into detachment, now this is a detachment from a fifth dimensional point of view. And there was a moment within like a few weeks ago where I was actually being called up into the sixth dimension, which was really cool, was really, really cool. Um, and that spending a lot of conscious time within that sixth dimensional space is what has helped me really like launch even further into detachment. Um, and because of that, now I've been realizing, I, I have felt recently within like the past few days, I have felt that my twin and I have actually separated from each other. He, um, you know, he pulled his energies back a bit, but he was still there. I could still feel him. We were still kind of, you know, ex uh, communicating with each other. Um, but then I think it was Wednesday night or maybe it was Thursday night. I really pulled back. Um, it was a moment where, you know, we were in communication. We were, we would communicate with each other. At least uh, communication would come to me at night a lot through telepathic means. Um, and it happened a lot at night. And Thursday night, I um, was getting into bed and we were communicating. And then at one point I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to pull back. Bye. And I did. It was the strangest thing because it just felt so natural. It was just like, huh? and it wasn't even like, it wasn't malicious. We weren't fighting. I wasn't angry. I'm not angry about anything. It's just, I guess I finally reached a place within myself to say, I don't need this right now. And it's, I had been saying to him, you know, telepathically and like intentions, I had been putting that intention out there, even in communicating with his fifth dimensional higher self. It was like, look, I understand that you're saying all these things. You're going through all these things. You know, you're, you're trying to get me not to disconnect and not to walk away. But at the same time, I need you to come forward and, and, and bring this forward in the 3D. I got yeah. That we can keep doing this back and forth all you want in telepathically and in 5D, but if you can't come forward in the 3D and hold up this torch the way I have been, then I really don't have much for you right now. And I don't mean that in a malicious way. I'm just saying it's like you can't hide behind the, fi the 5D, babe. <laughs> you can't. You can't because, because and, and not just because that's like my personal desire. I'm not trying to make demands we are meant to come be coming into union and working together in a physical three three dimensional way. So do what you got to do. And I guess it was that moment where on Thursday night where I was like, okay, obviously this really isn't going to help if you and I are still connecting in this way energetically. So I really just need to pull my energy away. <laughs> yeah. 
So the reason why I'm explaining this is because I feel like there are others of you that are going through this. Um, and I'm trying to help you put it into perspective. I'm trying to give you my side of the story so that you can, you know, apply that to yours and come to your own conclusions. Now, the other thing that's been coming through since I have really retracted in that way, and it was, it started a little before that, but once I really retracted, then it really started going synchronicities. Now, I have been paying attention to number sequences for quite a few years now. Um, it has been a guide for me, you know, keeping me on the right track and just trusting. But recently there has been a resurgence a, a of um, sequential numbers, mainly 654 and 456. Friday, yeah, Friday, it was Thursday night that I pulled my energy away. Friday, I saw 654 three times. And then later on that day, that was like in the morning time, um, later on that day, I was walking to the train, walking to the subway on my way to work, and I saw four, five, six, three times. Just in the 10, 15 minutes it took me to walk from my apartment to the subway. <laughs> like, it's crazy. And then I'm seeing just sequential numbers everywhere. Six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, nine, eight, seven, you know, one, two, three, three, two, one. I mean, it's everywhere. It's really everywhere. Um, I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, I have, an under, I have an intuitive understanding of it. I know that it's the universe confirming to me that I'm on the right path, that everything's going well. Um, so I'm bringing that up too because if you're experiencing that, like if you're still kind of unsure of what's going on, but you keep seeing all these synchronicities um, and you feel good about it, they don't, they don't put you into a state of fear, you're good. Okay, um, I would encourage everyone to watch um, Indigo Moon's Twin Flame Healing's latest video about certain things. There was a moment where she talked about telepathic communication um, that is not necessarily what you may think it is. And that was a pretty big eye opener for me. Um, yeah. So there's my update. That's what's going on with me. Um, I encourage you guys to share your sides of the stories, you know, so that we can all, we can all learn from it and grow from it. Cause this, I mean, we're here for each other. I'm here for you guys. You guys have been here for me and I'm so grateful for it. I, I say it over and over. I don't know where I would be if I didn't, if I hadn't come across this community and I hadn't started this page, like this has been, or this channel, excuse me. It's been, it's been an, an immense blessing. All right, so we're already 17 minutes into the video. I guess I'm gonna stop rambling now and I'm gonna get into the reading for us, yeah? So I'm gonna do this the same way I have been. Um, one is gonna be for the Divine Feminine, one's gonna be in for the Divine Masculine, the same spread that I've been doing, and then I'm gonna end with an Animal Spirit card for both sides. We're gonna start with the uh, Divine Feminine first. So let's get into this. Oh, and there's my laundry in the background. Whoops. Oh my God, more laundry. Huh? Okay, let's do this, guys. So, Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. We're starting with the Divine Feminine here. Please bring forward the best messages for the Divine Feminine at this time. Thank you so much, Spirit. Divine Feminine. So what's going on, Divine Feminine? Oops, that didn't want to work. Okay, what's going on? So Divine Feminine, as far as I'm feeling right now, there is a lot of detachment at hand. Um, and a lot of you, a lot of you may be, um, you may be questioning a lot. I know the Divine Masculine is going through quite a, a, a good, a, a serious, well, another, we'll say another cycle of um, Dark Knight of the Soul and Identity Crisis. And that, it's partially why I've been feeling that way, because I know I can deduce that my twin is going through the same thing, but the Divine Masculine is really going through it right now. And so Divine Feminine, you may be feeling effects of that. And um, <clears throat> that may in fact be driving you further into your own form of detachment, because many of us are coming to the realization that the more we are readily available for them, for Divine Masculine, even... <clears throat> excuse me, even on an energetic level, the more we are there for them to support them, 
you know, the less response, the, 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 the easier it is for them to not take as much responsibility as they may need to, okay? And so that could be driving you into some, you know, a greater form of detachment, Divine Feminine. I know that's what I've been experiencing. Um, okay, the cards are set. <laughs> I stopped shuffling for a reason. So let's get into this. Overall energy for the Divine Feminine. Yeah, we've got the Four of Cups in reverse. So this makes perfect sense. You know, releasing releasing any sort of, aha, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Three of Wands in reverse. Uh, oh, no, sorry. The Three of Wands is upright. Um, the Page of Wands in reverse. <laughs> and the page of swords in reverse yeah so what this is saying to me right now is first of all with the four of cups in reverse there is a there it's just not not caring anymore like and it's not even like you don't care it's just like you're moving away from um uh from being so concerned about unrequited love or offers that have been neglected or um, passed up on. And in, in a sense, this is also, uh, this is, yes, there's definitely a form of detachment here because this is also letting go of um, holding yourself back for the sake of your twin coming through, okay? Uh, and that was a, that's been a major theme for a lot of us. And I know recently when I really pulled my energy away, I was quite aware of the fact that I had in fact still been holding my love life on hold because for the sake of my twin coming through. And to be quite honest, I feel like, and I didn't, and it's not like I really realized it at the time. It wasn't until after the fact that I had realized that it was having an effect on the situation, but that absolutely, that energy of the situation, I was holding that energy for it. And it, most likely was affecting my twin. Like he could feel that. And so it was kind of driving him away. And it's not even like I was actively trying to do anything to, you know, to create that situation. I was just going with what my heart felt. And my heart at the time was saying, no, I don't, I don't want to go with anyone else. But, um, that was, that was a blockage. And so now that I've really retracted, I feel so much better and I'm not going in queen. And so I, as a result, I'm not going to hold myself back anymore. You know, I'm just, I'm in a moment of detachment where I don't, I'm, I'm not so concerned with how things are going to turn out, when they're going to turn out, you know, what and why, like whatever. I'm just going with the flow here. And that's what the Three of Wands is saying, is the Three of Wands is talking about releasing all of this um, the Four of Cups energy, the Page and the Page of Knight of Wands and Swords energy, releasing all of that and just moving forward with your life, okay? Releasing the um, holding yourself back with the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Now, this is this can talk about you know a, a negatively negatively aspected um, Queen of Pentacles or you know, but that's not what I'm picking up here. What I'm picking up is letting go of holding oneself for the sake of another. This is, this is, uh, I just heard, this is literally the, for many of us, this is like the final form of detachment that can really facilitate the energies that need to come through for the divine masculine and for the divine feminine to heal and grow and expand and be a greater version of themselves than they were before. And to be quite honest, that is the, main goal of this journey anyway to reach wholeness within oneself and if you are if you're pining after somebody you know uh, almost obsessively th it, you, you know what i mean like and i'm not even trying to blame you say that you're 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 keeping yourself in an obsessive state but as long as you are in that state your focus on your true self and your own healing is not there okay because that energy is being taken up by the person, place, thing, circumstance, whatever that you're obsessing over, okay? Um, and that is, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it out there. That is what I was going through, even though I wasn't trying to constantly have him on my mind all the time, he was on my mind all the time. And it was 
annoying and obnoxious because it's like, I'm trying to do my own thing with my life and here you are running circles in my head and, and it's like, why, 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 <laughs> you know? But now I'm at a point where it's like, yeah, I still think about them, but at the same time, it's nothing like it used to be. It really isn't. Um, granted, I have this last experience with us that happened between us, you know, kind of, kind of plaguing me a little bit, but at the same time, um, he's thinking about it too. And I, I, what, I can't really do anything about that. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, in your first position, divine feminine, you have your surrounding energies. What do we have here? The sun in reverse. Okay. So yes, this makes sense. Um, there are things happening. Things are happening but it's happening underneath the surface and divine feminine it's this is this is an extreme this is a really good time to practice faith um this is an excellent <laughs> i'm going to yes this is an excellent lesson in detachment in manifestation really because in order to really manifest that which you truly desire, you must remain detached from it. You cannot, you cannot hold attachments towards when it comes, how it comes, what it looks like, what it feels like, smells like, tastes like, blah, blah, blah. No, you can visualize ultimately what it is you want to manifest, but leave that visualization there with the universe. Keep your vibrations high so that you attract the best possible outcome, but let the universe bring it to you in the best way possible because there are ways that the universe can bring these things to you that you would have never imagined consciously okay so this is what the sun in reverse is saying to us right now divine feminine it may seem like nothing's happening like nothing's moving forward but underneath the surface things are moving okay the sun is shining it's just a little cloudy right now that's all literally that's all it is Excuse me, I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> okay, next, Divine Feminine. Your second position is how you are seeing um, your twin. Yes, how you're seeing your connection with your twin. But this is also, this also could be how you are, um, how you are seeing your connection with your own Divine Masculine energies within you. Yes, we have the Eight of Swords in reverse. Letting go. Okay, un, un, untrapping yourself. And this is what I was like, like what I was saying about mentally having this person on my mind all the time. I did, in many ways, I did feel trapped because I felt like I couldn't move anywhere else. I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't even think about pursuing someone else because, because I felt so deeply for this one person. And I still feel very deeply for him. I know we're still connected. I know we still have this divine connection, but... At the same time, it's like I'm I'm removing myself from this mental prison in a sense. Um, so in order for in order to live my life, and honestly, in order to give him the space, more of the space that he needs to live his life, and that's energetically. Okay, so you are we are coming out of um, certain viewpoints about masculine and feminine energy. We are coming out of um, entrapment when it comes to how you've seen your twin and how they've presented themselves recently or throughout your experience. Finally letting go of the, um, of the, what's the, oh, it was just there and now it's, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um, just finally letting go of the physical representation of things, allowing yourself to detach from physical outcomes the way things are supposed to look, when things show up in your life, okay? This, you are actively, with the eight of swords in reverse here in relation to how you see your twin and how you see your own masculine energies within Divine Feminine, you are actively learning the lesson of the sun in reverse in just letting it go. Instead of focusing on what has been, focus on what you want to create and just let it happen. So if that means that someone else comes into your life and you start to build a relationship with them, so be it. You never know. I mean, and, and that is that is the part of the Four of Cups in reverse that we were talking about, about not holding yourself, well, Four of Cups and Queen of Pentacles in reverse, in reverse not holding yourself, cutting yourself off from potential loving offers that can come to you. That is, in fact, the universe providing you with what you're asking for in the best way, shape, and form at this time, okay? 
Excellent. Next, in your next position, we have where you are in relation to union, but also this is with your twin, but this is also in relation to union within yourself. Yes, we are feminine and masculine energies. We have the six of swords and this is upright and this is excellent. This is, uh, this, this card right here is feel, filling me with so much joy right now because it's finally like moving away from the old paradigm. That's the word I was looking for. The old paradigm. The old ways that things have shown up. The old ways that things have been represented. People have shown themselves. The way people have acted. The false masks that people have been showing. You're letting, you're moving away from that now and you're looking for something different. And it's, I have never really seen this before, but if you look on this card, this woman here, she looks like she's pregnant, doesn't she? Well, 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 divine feminine. Gestation. We're still we're still giving birth to this brand new reality that we all really want, even the divine masculine wants. Um, and so what this card is saying is we are moving away in relation to union with our twins and union with ourselves. We're moving away from the old paradigm. And there really is nothing. <laughs> there really is nothing else to say about it other than that. So good on you, divine feminine. Next, we have what do you want your divine masculine to know? And this is not um, communication between you and your your feminine and masculine energies. This is actually what you want your twin to know. We have the ten of wands, and this is saying this is a direct message to the divine masculine saying. I am letting go of these burdens now. And I will tell you, that period that I've been in for so long, ever since I was active, I really came into contact with my twin, physical, like I, we met each other and we were interacting on a physical level. And the energies have just, this was last summer, this started, I wanna say in like June of last year. And man, the, I mean, the energies have just been so intense. It was so hard to deal with. It really was. And it and it was also incredibly burdensome. Incredibly burdensome. Like, I don't know how, how else to say it other than that. And so now the Divine Feminine is saying to the Divine Masculine, I am not going to carry these burdens by myself anymore. Okay? And thankfully, this card is upright. Okay, so it means that what the, what I'm picking up here is the Divine Feminine is very aware of how burdensome this has been on him or her. Okay, so, or her, her or him, however, what it, it doesn't matter. The Divine Feminine has been incredibly burdened by this, and she's not doing it anymore. And this is not coming from a place of malice. We're not fighting with you. We're not angry with you in most cases. I know I'm not angry. I understand... I fully understand what's happening around me enough to know to be okay with it, right? So what I'm saying here is I finally, personally, I'm just going to say, I'm going to speak my, speak for myself as a divine feminine. I have reached a certain, uh, enough of an understanding and enough of a form of detachment to say, look, I'm just going to let go. Of, I'm letting go of these burdens and I'm dropping, I'm not taking the lead anymore. I'm not holding this one, uh, this torch of our relationship or, or our connection up anymore. I'm still going to be a twin flame and do my spirit and my light work. But as far as it comes to this connection, until you are ready to accept some of the burden as well, and I'm not trying to throw shade, I know you're going through a really tough time, Divine Masculine, but until you are ready to pick up the torch as well, and so neither one of us are... Uh, neither one of us are leading the way. We're both leading the way together. I'm dropping these burdens. And to be quite honest, I'm already, I'm picking up that this is going to be so helpful for both of us, right? Because when the divine feminine was in that stage of feeling these intense energies and really wanting to this connection to happen or to manifest, it was blocking the, the situation in the sense that the divine masculine was feeling those energies and knowing that they're not ready for it and running. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to pull us back into the runner chaser aspect, but it was, but basically it was imbalanced. Okay. So now that the divine feminine is starting to come to a point where she's not going to carry these burdens anymore and she's okay with it. Okay. It's not, and it's not, and it's not happening because, um, she's pissed off, fed up, trying to get revenge. No, it's really just like an aha moment. Like, oh yeah, okay, I'm going to drop this now. <laughs> like, I don't, I, I'm, I'm good. 
I'm good within myself as a divine feminine to say, I don't need to carry all these burdens. Period. I'm rambling. Sorry. <laughs> Let's just get on with the story. Um, what's crowning you, divine feminine? What are your challenges? What are you manifesting? What's on your mind even? We have the high priestess in reverse. So uh, this is not... This is not a situation in which um, the Divine Feminine is ignoring your intuition. You might feel disconnected from it. I will say that. Um, it's not like you're ignoring it. Um, it's more, this feels more like you're unsure. You feel a little disconnected, maybe a lot disconnected from your intuition. I know I've been feeling it that way as well. What I am picking up though, and actually this is something I wanted to mention, a lot of us um, have been feeling a, 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 an intensification of our intuitions, right? But for me personally, it's because I, I'm, I've kind of reached a new level with it. And so things that were, that felt, that I felt more are now more easily um, received. So I don't feel things as much as I used to. Like I don't feel things the same way I used to when I was really starting to get acclimated with my intuition. Now things just happen. And because I don't feel it the way I used to, I feel like I'm not connected. But <laughs> as soon as I said that, Source just said, no, but you really are. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what the High Priestess in reverse is for you, Divine Feminine. Um, this is also what I'm picking up is the desire to not keep secrets anymore. Okay. So this form of detachment that you may be experiencing is like knowing for a fact that you don't want this to be a secret. You don't want to hide anything. You don't want to have to lie to people. You want to be able to speak the truth about things. And so because not all of us are in that position to be able to do that, we're walking away. We're saying enough is enough. And we're moving on because of self-respect and self-love and unconditional love and knowing that the divine masculine really needs more space in order to go through what he's going through. Okay. Finally, what's in the under undercurrent for you, divine feminine, the underlying energies, we have the eight of pentacles in reverse. Okay. So, um, this is speaking to the burdens Th that, um, yeah, this is speaking to this, I'm hearing it as final form of detachment that we're experiencing. Um, and it's I and I, I hesitate to put it in that way, um, because nothing is ever final. Everything is constantly happening, you know, cycles and whatnot. But for the sake of um, logical uh, explanation, I guess it would be considered a final form of detachment because this is where we really get to the point where it's like we're not going to be putting in any more work than we need to when it comes to this connection. Because we're already doing a ton of work anyway on our own, healing ourselves. And it's not like we can heal the, the divine masculine for him. So <laughs> I literally, I just heard it this way. We're finally pulling out. <laughs> oh man, that was a good one. That was a good one, spirit. We are finally pulling out. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I love that the divine has such a freaking awesome sense of humor, man, because if they didn't, I don't know where any of us would be. <laughs> but okay, so there really isn't anything else I need to say there. That's pretty much it for you, divine feminine. So now I'm going to get into your spirit animal card for this week's conversation. I am in love with this deck, guys. I'm in love. The Animal Spirit deck. If you haven't picked it up yet and you're feeling guided to do so, I'm saying this because I do feel like there are some of you that have been feeling the urge to buy this deck. Buy this deck, y'all. It's fantastic. I love every second, every second of working with it. So, I'm sorry. Give me just a second here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure there was nothing that I missed in these cards. We're good. So, Spirit, please bring forward the best message for the Divine Feminine um, at this time in relation to this reading and this current conversation we're having from the Animal Spirit deck, please. Thank you so much, Spirit. 
Divine Feminine. Best message for you, Divine Feminine. Best message. Here. You get two, Divine Feminine. That was the right one. Okay. Do, 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 do. I'm going to put this up here. And that. Perfect. So, we have Golden Egg and Dragonfly. Now, funny story. Um, this card came up in that personal reading I did last uh, yesterday. And it came up for the Divine Feminine. Excellent. So, we're going to read Golden Egg first. Golden Egg. Now, this is Spirit, and Dragonfly is Fire. Okay, so. Golden Egg. Message at the center of the heart. The unstruck sound. Within the Golden Egg lives a precious sound. Deep within that sound resides a message. The sound cannot be heard, nor the message discerned, until we retreat from the noise of modern-day life. The magical essence of the golden egg needs warmth, quiet, and a time and time to unfold. No rushing, no pushing, no grasping. Find a place of deep and restful, restful ease, perhaps through yoga, nidra, or meditation. If you do not yet have a meditation practice, take some time for introspection or contemplation. When the mind begins to settle and the breath is calm, ask the question that weighs heaviest on your heart staying open to any response you hear. Engaging with the energy of the golden egg is an advanced practice. It requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with vulnerability. When a feeling of tenderness or gratitude arises from deep within you, know that you are well on your way. Your chest may swell like you are seeing an old friend that's been away for a long, long time. Listen to the message they've been waiting to tell you. Okay, the golden egg and the fourth chakra. The subtle essence of the golden egg is nestled deep within the heart center at the fourth chakra. This chakra, called Anahata, is the home of the self or soul. By bringing the mind into this center, we discover a portal to the most intimate and luminous space. It is said our inner guide sits there in deep meditation waiting for us. Anahata translates as the unstruck sound. So this is really talking about for the divine feminines that are resonating with this card, the golden egg, this moment of deep, serious detachment is now freeing you to go deeper within yourself, right? Because like I said before, we were in this very obsessive state. We were constantly thinking about them, blah, blah, blah. And we really couldn't get as clear and deep within ourselves as we needed to. We knew we needed to. But now we are in this position where we're letting go of all of these things. We're dropping these burdens. We're finally pulling out and we can go deeper within ourselves. Yeah. So that's really beautiful. Finally, we have Dragonfly. Oh, no. Dragonfly is air. Excuse me. Is air, not fire. I misspoke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dragonfly, master of light, illusion, and the mind. The dragonfly is an ancient and ethereal creature that awakens a sense of wonder in all. The dragonfly is a symbol of the mind, as it is always moving, shifting, shimmering, and changing. When the dragonfly card appears, it's worth considering the quality of your mind and perception. Are they restless or still, dreamlike or crystal clear? The situation at hand may be different than it appears at first glance. The dragonfly remains, reminds us to calm the mind so the light of wisdom can shine through. So this is mirroring the message of meditative practice that the golden egg um, has been, uh, did bring forward. Meditation, yoga, I mean, I, I've been trying to do both, but I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be very honest. I haven't been doing it all, but you know what? It's fine. It really is okay because I've been following my heart and following, you know, what my true desires are. And so it's all good. But um, when in balance, Dragonfly sees clearly, is joyful and magical. When out of balance, Dragonfly can't concentrate. He has a busy mind. To bring in the ba into balance, focus on the breath. Okay, so Divine Feminine, moving forward after this conversation, it is really a good time for you to start a meditative practice, expand on your meditative practice, just do it, you know? Meditate and do, your yo do some yoga to help. If you're feeling stuck in certain cycles, yoga will help you move that energy out of your body and through your body. Um, you know, and move around stagnant energies and all that stuff. 
but you're in really in a moment where you can connect with yourself on a deeper level. Okay. So you're encouraged to do that at this point. Okay. Facilitate this movement with the six of swords where you are in relation to union by meditating and focus on focusing on you and, you know, really, really developing that deeper connection with yourself and with source to move forward on your journey. All right, Divine Feminine, so there that is for you. So I'm going to reset everything. Just bear with me for a few moments. And then we will get into the energies for the Divine Masculine, yeah? One more. Okay. So... Divine Masculine, let's talk, you know? <laughs> what are you going through? You're going through a lot. I mean, I know I've been saying I've had this moment. Um, I've, had, I've been in this moment where I've been feeling like I'm going through somewhat of an identity crisis. And I do think I have been, you know, just because things are shifting for me and I'm becoming more and more intuitive and more and more in connection, you know, trusting of my intuition. And because of that, you know, the situation went down with my Divine Masculine where things kind of blew up in my face and I was questioning and questioning and questioning, but then I realized, no, I did exactly what I was guided to do. And so did he, to be honest. So, but now because of all of that, because of whatever happened, and this is, I'm just speaking to my pers own personal situation, but whatever happened between us in that moment is what's now causing this, like, um, you know, this somewhat sort of identity crisis we're being challenged we're being put to the test you know who we who we know ourselves to be who we think we are as human beings are really being put to the test and i feel like divine masculine is you're going through that the most right now divine feminine went through that all, for a long time over a long period of time and so now it's kind of like the divine masculine's turn to do so and divine masculine you've been I mean, the Divine Feminine has been learning all these lessons over a period of years. And whereas in you, Divine Masculine, you're learning this over a period of months, even maybe even weeks, you know what I mean? So this is a really, really intense thing for you. I want you to know that underneath all of the, you know, the, the ego battles and the, the, the emotional flare-ups and the whatever, 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 the Divine Feminine does understand what you're going through, Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have to take responsibility for yourself and your actions, but we still get it. So, Spirit, please bring forward the best messages for the Divine Masculine at this time. Thank you. Yeah, that's all I need to say. <laughs> um, so, Divine Masculine, best messages for you during this time period. Divine Masculine. All right, one more shuffle for you, Divine Masculine. Okay, now let's cut, cut the deck here. All right, Divine Masculine, overall energy, you have the world. Look at that. So first and foremost, this is saying to me that you're almost there, <laughs> okay? You're almost there, Divine Masculine. Don't worry. It's, things are going very, very well. And the world is upright, which is, which is fantastic. It means that there is no blockage to the ending of the cycle right now. So that's good. Um, and also what this is saying to me is you're really feeling some very, very intense energies right now. Like this one person I did that personal reading for yesterday, her Divine Masculine said to her that he was going through hell. Most of you are right now. Um, even if you're not in separation, now this is for twins in separation, but for those of you that are not, if you're if you're watching this right now, oh, there's the resistance. <laughs> uh, if you're watching this right now, you might be going through hell too. And here we go. We have the death, but it's reversed. Why? Because it's blocked. Why? Because y'all don't want to move. Why? <sighs> wow. Because you're not really listening to your inner self. You're not listening to that inner guru. You're resisting the knowledge that's coming in. And there you are, showing up, the King of Wands in reverse. Okay, now I, you do you can hear a bit of dis disappointment in my voice and I apologize for that because um, I was hoping this was gonna turn out a little better, but please understand that I totally get it. 
Okay. So, I, so yes, there is some disappointment in my voice, but I don't want that. To, I'm just not trying to trigger anybody. I'm a little disappointed for you too. Um, but at the same time, I understand. I understand why there's so much blockage and so much resistance here. And it's not even that it's that much of you're resisting things. What I feel like right now is that um, there is a little bit of a pause because this situation is so damn heavy, okay? Like this, going through hell is kind of like the perfect way to explain it. So I want to thank um, that person for, you know, sharing that with me. I do want to say that even though death, the Hierophant, Eight of Wands, and the King of Wands is reversed, the silver lining here is the world is upright, okay? So what that's saying to me is things are things are happening underneath the surface. It may not, it may look like nothing's happening. It may look like there's no change coming, but that, that having the world in reverse, or I'm sorry, the world upright really just throws all this reversal blows all this reversal out of the water for me because I really feel the universe is really working underneath the surface to get all of this done. The other thing that um, these reversals are saying to me is not is speaking more to um, just more time being needed. We are still deep in the process of this ending that is represented by the world. Um, so it's really not even that there's that much resistance because with the Eight of Wands here, Again, this is reversed, but at the same time, things are moving very, very quickly for the Divine Masculine. And so the reversals are saying that, you know, you just need to have more patience with yourself, Divine Masculine, because there's a lot that you need to complete right now. And it's while it's still moving fast, we're not, you're not being rushed through the process, okay? So that's why most of these reversals are here. Well, I'm sorry, that's most of the reason why these reversals are here, okay? All right. Um, your current surrounding energy is Divine Masculine. We have, ha ha, the devil in reverse. So, again, and this is why this is so painful. The devil has been plaguing the Divine Masculine for eons, okay? It's, it's been, he's been plaguing the Divine Feminine too. But right now, we are in the throes of this, uh, this power struggle between the this established patriarchy and um, the established... Uh, view of what masculine and femininity should be, masculinity and femininity should be, <clears throat> excuse me, so yeah, I just heard it. We're in an ego battle, okay? The light is trying to come down and bring more information, more knowledge and more, more understanding, and the collective ego of the patriarchy and all that stuff just isn't having it. Why? Because they're going to lose power. Sorry about it. Sorry, not sorry. You know, that kind of thing. And so your surrounding energies right now, Divine Masculine, and of course, this is right on top of death, and they're both reversed, but it's not as bad as you think. It's actually a good thing in this situation because this is such a straight, because the devil energy, however you want to label it, see it as whatever, does have a very, very strong hold on us as a society right now, mostly on masculine energies. Why? Because the masculine energies are more physically 3D oriented, whereas the feminine energies are more 5D oriented. So intuition, psychic ability, all of that stuff. So it's easier for, for feminine energies, whether mas whether a man in a man's body or a woman's body, it is easier for feminine energies to get the information that they need to see things differently. Whereas the masculine energies are, are very much focused and oriented in the 3D world, and that's where the, that's the domain of the devil, okay? That's what wants to keep control of the 3D world because as uh, in keeping control of the 3D world, then separation is easier to keep in place and therefore more control can be taken over those who reside within the 3D realm. I hope that came out correctly. I hope you understand what I'm saying there. This is another reason why there are so many reversals here, why this is such... Why, why many Divine Masculines feel like they're going through such hell. Because the war is on, okay? The war is on. But also the reversal of the devil is saying there is active release happening here. Happening here. So excellent, 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 okay? Next, um, how you are seeing your twin, Divine Masculine, but also how you are seeing your relationship with your own feminine energies. We have... The Queen of Swords. 
Yes. And this is very, very good. This is especially when it comes to how you, and it's upright, especially when it comes to how you're seeing your own feminine energies. You're taking a no bullshit stance. Okay. You're looking at things as objectively as possible. And when it comes to, um, your divine feminine energies, you are taking on a little bit of this queen of swords energy when it's, when you are thinking back on how, how you have treated, um, uh, yourself, your feminine side, and also feminine energies around you in your external world. I'm actively seeing you look at these things from a feminine point of view now, in many cases, divine masculine. And so you're coming into terms with a lot of different things. Now, this is also adding to your workload in all of this transformation that is happening, which is also making, for many of you, is making things that much more difficult because now you're start, starting to see a lot more truths about things that you didn't see before or you refused to see before. And that's just, that's just adding to it. It's making it even harder for you. And I get that, but hey... You know, it's, it's, it's about time. You have to, you have to be able to take responsibility for your actions in order to move forward in your life. Because if you don't, if you're constantly blaming others for things, you're really not going to get anywhere. So yeah, yes, divine masculine, you're going through hell right now. And I feel for you. We all do. We wish there was some, there was other things we, we, more we could do to help you, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but at this point, this you really got to do this on your own now in a certain way. We're always here for you, but there you have to do a lot of this on your own. Moving forward, we have, um, where are you in relation to union? Now, this is with your twin and also with union within yourself. We have the four of swords. This makes perfect sense. Taking a rest. Um, pulling back. This is actively talking about um, divine masculines uh, retract, retreating, re retracting their energies, pulling away, um, almost hiding away, I just heard. Um, this is a time of rest. And this is also why we have these reversals here with all of this transformation happening. A time that there, things have kind of maybe, for some of you divine masculines, things may have slowed down, have stopped even. Um, and this is just facilitating a time for you to just recuperate a little bit, get a little more clarity on certain things um, so that you can move forward once the battle drums up again, yeah? Okay, next we have uh, how, what you want your divine feminine to know. And this is your actual twin, not just, not your feminine energies, but your what you want your divine feminine to know. We have <laughs> the seven of cups in reverse. So this is talking about um, no longer being in a dreamy state, no longer really trying, uh, being a bit confused about where what you want, where you want to be, you know, how you want to get there even is what I just heard. Um, so many of that, and this is why, this is also why we have all of this transformation happening, the swift movement in the transformation, the communication with your higher self with now, um, what I failed to mention before the Hierophant, and I just picked up on this. So this is why I'm saying it now. The Hierophant is, uh, one of the few ways that, um, the divine masculine can be portrayed in, Oh, wow. I just put this together in um, the Tarot. Now, we're in the major arcana here. The Hierophant would represent the Divine Masculine. The High Priestess represents that Divine Feminine. And the Divine Feminine got the High Priestess in her spread. And now the Divine Masculine is getting the Hierophant in his spread. So there's that mirroring going on. We have the counterparts between the... Between the... Um, the, the, the I wanted to say the kids, but the twins. Um... And so what that is reflecting for both of us is the fact that we are coming to a new level of understanding about our divine feminine and divine masculine nature. And so I'm seeing there's a lot of communication happening between the higher divine masculine collective in learning about what true masculinity is and looks like, feels like, how it express the many different ways masculine energy expresses it himself, okay? And so what... Divine Masculine, what you want your Divine Feminine to know is that you're coming to terms with that. You're coming out of this confusion need, like, not so sure, which one do I choose, blah, blah, blah. Nope, nope, you're coming out of that now. Things are becoming much, much clearer. 
things are becoming much clearer with the Queen of Swords and the Seven of Cups here. And this is all on top of the Eight of Wands, which is saying there is a lot of communication internal. This is internal communication. This is not external communication. Um, there is a lot of internal communication and a lot of swift internal movement in a very positive and brand new direction. Okay, what is crowning you, Divine Masculine? What are you thinking about? What are you manifesting? We have your current challenge. Ah, yeah, the Nine of Swords. And that makes perfect sense because uh, let me tell you, I've been feeling that energy from my Divine Masculine too. Worrying, um, nightmares, um, excessive daydreaming, obsessive, obsessive daydreaming also over some situation that happened, whether it be in the recent history, in the recent past or you know, years ago that kind of set things on a really nasty point in your relationship with your divine feminine, whether it was something she did or what something you did, being up in your head about it, being anxious. Um, and this is also because you're going through all this transformation. There are so many things that are coming to the surface right now that you're being made aware of that it's overwhelming. Yeah, of course it's overwhelming. Of course it's going to give you nightmares. Of course it's going to, you know, incite all kinds of anxiety within you, but it's okay. It really is okay because as long as you're doing the work to 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 rectify things, you'll be good. The universe always has your back, okay? Divine masculine, there is no need, there really is no need to to feel like um you're in any sort of danger <clears throat> because I do feel like that's part of what the 9 of swords is talking about here. Many of you divine masculines feel like you're in some sort of danger, like you're in some sort of trouble, and I've been feeling that myself, um, being projected from my divine masculine, you're not in trouble. You really aren't. It may feel like, you know, there are some situations in which, you know, you're not exactly sure how things are going to turn out with certain groups, people or whatnot, but you're not in, you're not in any really sort, any real danger, to be honest. You're not. Okay. And finally, what's under you, what's in your undertow, your undercurrent divine masculine? We have <laughs> we have the two of pentacles in reverse. But you know what? That makes that makes total sense. And this is part of the reason why you're feeling so anxious or afraid having these nightmares or even these daymares, I'll call them, and daydreaming. And it's just like all this terrible stuff coming to your mind. You're finding it hard to balance right now. But that is absolutely because there is so much that's changing around you right now. Okay? So this lack of balance, especially... Especially you as a, um, as a physically oriented energy, you know, all of this change that's happening, that's coming through the five, fifth dimension and like literally injecting itself through the fourth and into the third dimension, of course your balance is going to be offset. Of course you're going to feel like you, you don't have it together, like your world is about to fall apart, like you just can't get it, you just cannot keep it together. Duh. <laughs> and I don't mean that duh as in like, uh, as in like an insult or anything, but it's like, no, oh man. It's like, no, that makes perfect sense. I just dropped like a ton of cards back here. Hold on. But anyway, so when I see this two of pentacles, I'm not worried. I'm really not worried about it. Um, or, or maybe I should say I'm not really surprised either. Um, there's no reason, there's no reason to feel be surprised because it's all par for the course at this point. You know, you're going through hell. You're going through hell right now. You're going through a remodeling, a reshape of your reality, of your world. So yeah, things are going to feel out of balance right now. But this is not something I'm worried about. Guys, I just... Okay. Um, I want to talk about these synchronicities that I mentioned to you before because I've, I've been doing all these personal readings and stuff and I just... I keep seeing these sequential numbers within the counter. I just saw three, four, five, you know, and it's, it's just, uh, I don't know what else I wanted to say about that. I just wanted to express that to you guys. <laughs> okay, so Divine Masculine, let's get some animal spirit guidance for you right now in relation to this reading. Spirit, please bring forward the best message for Divine Masculine from the animal spirits in relation to this reading, and, all, and especially in relation to all this transformation that the Divine Masculine is going through, because man, is this intense. I'm being guided to look underneath this King of Wands. What do we have? Aha! Look at you, Divine Masculine. You've got some mirroring from the Divine Feminine. You've got the Eight of Swords in reverse, and that's a good thing. 
I'm seeing a connection between the eight of the eight of swords in reverse and the nine of swords. Um, you're in this nine of swords state, but because you have this energy of the queen of swords around you, it's helping you. It's helping you pull yourself out of this mental entrapment. Now you are feeling a little more extra anxiety because you're starting to um, you're starting to uh, go into some unknown territory. So that's kind of helping reinforce. <laughs> Some of this Nine of Swords energy, to, to be quite honest, but that's okay. It's mainly, and I, again, I'm not so worried about it. It's mainly because you're just entering into an unknown space, and so you don't really know what to expect. So, of course, you're going to feel a little anxious about it, but hey, it's all good. All right. One more shuffle for you, Divine Masculine, and then we will get your Animal Spirit card, yeah? Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this, y'all. <laughs> Divine Masculine, best message for you at this time. One. One more I'm hearing. Here we go. Aw, bear. Okay. And the other one is, the one that came out first, is lamb. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Divine Masculine. So, let's get into this. Lamb first. Here we go. Oh, and both of these are earth. Oh, look, that makes perfect sense. Because you're really, I mean, you're really working on um, reshaping your physical reality right now, Divine Masculine. So the fact that you would have two um, earth energetically oriented animals on your side right now makes perfect sense. So, lamb, peaceful. Prophetic and patient. The lamb is... Hold on, let me hold this up for you. The lamb is the bearer of an important message. Its contents can only be heard when a deep level of quiet has been established. Lamb energy is the honest guidance you hear from an old friend, a young child, or sometimes a surprising stranger. Yeah, stranger. Though the lamb's message may channel through another person, the wisdom resonates within you. It will repeat and reverberate until you listen. <laughs> Approach this gentle creature with utmost patience and reverence. Truth is a gift. Sit still, listen, and receive. Okay, when out of balance, lamb is, uh, when in balance, excuse me, lamb has knowingness and inner peace. When out of balance, lamb is quiet, timid, and concerned. To bring into balance, one must do meditation and listening. So honestly, you are mirroring the divine feminine here, divine masculine, because with the, the golden egg that came out for the divine feminine, the guidance was to meditate, um, to go really deep within, to find peace and calm and quiet your mind, especially with the dragonfly also. Quiet your mind so that any sort of knowledge, information, healing ops also can be uh, received and facilitated, yes? So next with Bear, sorry, the cards got all, <laughs> it's bothering me. Anyway, next we have Bear, <laughs> bear. sorry guys. <laughs> um, yeah, bear, 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 said bear, 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 bear. Hey, bear. All right. Waking from spiritual slumber, beginning anew. After a long winter, the bear arises from deep slumber. At first, the movement and effort are difficult, but the bear knows it's time to awaken and move toward the dawning light. The bear card represents an individual on the cusp of new directions and personal transformation. Hallelujah, can I get an amen? The initial weeks and months of this spiritual quest may feel tricky. Yeah, yeah, may feel tricky, cumbersome, and full of obstacles. Um, full of obstacles, but you have no choice, bear. Winter wanes and the warmth of spring emerges and your transformation begins. When in balance, bear has inner strength and a yearning to grow. When out of balance, bear is with uh, is when out of balance, bear experiences withdrawal, lethargy, and heaviness. To bring into balance, one must practice movement and exercise. I mean, yeah, that makes perfect sense. We were just talking about all this transformation that the divine masculine is going through, and what I do want to point out is that you you do have the strength to persevere, divine masculine. You might be afraid, you may feel tired, worn out, whatever. But bear is also saying you have the strength to do this, okay? Bears are really powerful animals, really powerful creatures. Uh, so you got this. All right, guys. 
that's it. I mean, I think, I think I'm just going to leave it there. I don't really have anything else to say about it. <laughs> okay. Much love to you all. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I am available for private readings. You know how to find me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope this was helpful for you and I hope you, ha you guys have a great week and I will, I, I look forward to our next conversation. Yeah. Much love. Take care. Bye.